Hey guys, welcome to the Happy Hour Podcast with Jamie Ivy. I'm Jamie and I'm so glad that you're here. If this is your first time, I know you're going to love it. The Happy Hour is basically just me and another girlfriend chatting and you really do feel like you're a part of our conversation. The Happy Hour Podcast wants to encourage you where you are, wants you to feel like there are other women out there that get what you're going through and also just make you laugh and have an enjoyable hour of your day. Whether you're listening in your car, while you're doing laundry, on your way to work, working out, thanks for joining us on the show. I want to say thanks real quick to someone that left a comment on iTunes. Ruth Ann said, Hey, Jamie, love your happy hours. I'm finally caught up thanks to listening in the kitchen, in the air, and in my car. I'm not married, so I love when you talk about the occasional non-mom topics. However, I do respite foster care, so I definitely glean some tidbits here and there. Austin is on my list. I've never been. Thanks for all you do, Ruth Ann. Ruth Ann, come to Austin. You're going to love it. Uh, one more comment from someone. They said, Jamie, I've really enjoyed listening to your podcast. My kids are teens now, and this season of life tends to mean more hours of alone and quiet time than I would like. It's been like having girlfriends in my house to listen to and your guest chat. Also, getting new books added to my reading list. I'm so glad that we get to make you feel like you have girlfriends in your house hanging out with you. Thanks so much for leaving a comment. If you like the show, I'd love to hear from you over on iTunes or at my blog, jamieivy.com. Today's podcast is brought to you by Slum Love Sweater Company. Slum Love's mission is to provide quality, stylish clothing that is also making a difference in the world. Slum Love employs women who live in one of the world's largest slums located in Nairobi, Kenya. They are paid fair wages, treated with respect, and given the resources they need to provide for themselves and their families. But it doesn't stop there. Slum Love takes a portion from every sale and helps provide high school scholarships for children living in the slum. The goal of Slum Love is to give people an opportunity to help change lives through their everyday purchases. When you buy from Slum Love, you can know that you are truly making a difference. I personally have two Slum Love sweaters and love them. Go check them out at slumlove.com. Today's guest on the show is my friend Lindsay Wheeler, and we met in the fall at the Influence Conference, and then we met again at If Gathering, and I am so glad that she is here with us today. You are going to love everything she has to say. She's going to share her story of her struggle with Lyme disease and the adoption of their daughter from Guatemala and the struggles that they've had with that. More importantly, you're going to be encouraged after you listen to the show. Her story is going to encourage you to love those around you better. And she's going to tell you all about her company that she started called Bottle of Tears. And we're actually going to give away three bottles. So listen, and we'll let you know how we're going to do that. And this business that she started is basically a business of hope. And she wants to provide a way for you to love those around you that are struggling better. And so sit back, relax. You're going to love my friend, Lindsay. Here she goes. Thanks for coming on the happy hour. I'm so glad to be here. I'm really excited. Are you recovered from your weekend in Austin? Not really. No. I mean, you can see the bags under my eyes on Skype. (laughs) I'm tired. tired. But I mean, it was unreal. It was so good. Now, did you come to IF last year? No, last year I, this is kind of a longer story, but I ended up staying. We're here for an hour, so go for it. Oh, perfect. (laughs) Okay, um, last year I was very, very sick, and um, I deal with chronic Lyme disease, and so I was at home basically bedridden and decided, okay, like either I can lay here and just be really sad or I can watch if from my bed. And so I just had my computer laying next to me in bed and I literally just wept for hours and hours and hours. And my husband, Chris kept coming in and he's like, are you okay? okay? I'm like, yes, I am. But you know, God was just moving and speaking to me from my bed, you know, which was awesome. So to be there this year was like, just, I don't know. I just felt like it was God just saying, I love you so much. Here you go. You know, that's so special. Now you actually have been friends with Jenny Allen for a long time. Is that right? I have. Um, We grew up in Little Rock together and their family is like my second family. Jenny's middle sister, Brooke, we call ourselves best friends of life. What? Is that the one that lives in Colorado? Yeah. She, she works on the most amazing dude ranch you've ever seen in your life. Lost Valley Ranch, for those of you out there that want to go on a really awesome vacation. Um, but Brooke was my best friend growing up. And so Jenny just became super close because of that. And my husband and I actually met working for Jenny and Zach in Cleveland, Texas. I didn't know that. Tell me the story. Yeah. I don't know this part. Yeah. So Jenny and Zach, um, her husband Zach ended up 
he was head of a youth group at Cleburne Bible Church in Cleburne, Texas, which is a tiny little town close to Fort Worth. And I graduated from college, and Jenny called me and was like, I want you to come work at the girls' side of the youth group. And I was like, Jenny, no. Like, I don't want to move to Cleveland, Texas. And, and where were you? Where were you in college? I was at the University of Arkansas at Fayetteville. Okay. okay. And um, she was like, you've got to do this. Like, this is amazing. She, I call her my motivational speaker. Like, she's always motivating me yeah. for the thing. Um, and so I ended up going to Cleburne and I remember driving up there and going, what am I doing? Like, this is crazy. And at the same time, they called my husband, Chris, to come work the guy's side of the youth group. And I never met him before. Um, so yeah, so we ended up working with them and, um, Zach was just like a big brother to both of us. And Jenny, this is hilarious. Uh, Jenny really wanted Chris and I to start dating, but it just wasn't happening. And so she would invite us over to their house to like eat dinner. Oh yeah. And then she would say, Zach and I are tired. We're going to bed. And she would light all these candles and like put on music and then go to bed. It's like she was creating this like dating moment for y'all. Oh, totally. So she planned this. Yeah. And Zach ended up, what Zach ended up speaking at our wedding, which was really cool. Yeah. How long have y'all been married? It'll be 11 years in two weeks, which okay. is crazy. I so y'all started dating there in Cleveland, Texas, and then what? We did. We got married, and we stayed in Cleveland a few more months, and then we felt like God was calling us um, to Nashville, and Chris ended up taking a job at Fellowship Bible Church in Nashville as one of their youth guys. And so we were there for... I want to say eight years before, um, before he moved on to his job at show hope. Okay. So, okay. yeah. And what does he do at show hope? He is the director of student initiatives okay. and show hope is, um, the orphan care ministry created by Stephen Curtis Chapman and Mary Beth, which they're amazing. Um, and so we help give families grants that are adopting that, that need money to finish their adoption and Chris got to come in, and it's so cool because their vision, too, is to see um, junior high and high school and college just understand the plight of the orphan. Mm-hmm. And so that's his job is to go speak. And he has a thing called Red Bus Project that they take this huge double-decker Red Bus to different college campuses, and it's like a rolling thrift store. And at the same time, they're, like, spreading awareness for orphan care and foster care. And That's really the, cool. I know. So the college students, they either donate their clothes or they go on the bus and they buy clothes off the off the bus. Yeah. Have you all ever come to Texas with that? We have. We went to Baylor, and I'm not sure all of the different ones. But, yeah, okay. we have. So it's Show really Hope, cool. we actually received a grant from them when we were you adopting did? our son Deacon. Yep. That's awesome. And it was crazy because it came in right at the last minute and we had to travel. And so yeah. it like helped and we went to a different agency. So there were added costs. And so it was like God's timing was perfect. So we actually received a grant yeah. from them. That's awesome. We did for our Eliana too. We were adopting Eliana. So we got a grant from them before we ever worked for them. Okay. So fun. Yeah. Um, okay. So we haven't even introduced you. This happens to me every time I do oh, a sorry. show. I just start <laughs> chatting. Because yeah. honestly, this happy hour podcast is like the coolest thing I've ever done because mm-hmm. literally I just get to talk to a friend for yeah. like an hour. And that's how fun is that? Yeah, that's perfect. And then we record it and let everyone else listen to us as well. <laughs> so it's so fun. Yeah. Um, but when did we meet? Did we meet when I lived in Nashville? I felt like I met you once, maybe. That's what I, I kind of feel like to do. Whoops, there goes my earring. I remember going to an orphan care like conference, and your husband was leading worship, and maybe we met there. I'm not sure. In but Nashville, I feel like I've always known who you were. Is it Was it Together for Adoption? Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. That was a long time ago. But then this year, I remember knowing you, okay. because we became friends on Facebook, okay. and I guess I was like, you know, I know who you were. Yeah. So I got to meet you at Influence Conference we did. this year. We met at Influence Conference, and it was so cool. And that's when you shared me with your whole story of yeah. your daughter and your um, yeah. auto Lyme disease and the organization that you've started. And so I just yeah. thought, you're doing some really cool things. 
But so before sweet. we get to all the cool things that you're doing, can you yeah. tell me what happened at the very end of if, because I left early because okay. I had to get yeah. home to get story ready for the daddy daughter dance. Um, and she looked so cute, cute, by the way. She told me yesterday, it was so cute. She was getting out of the bath or something, and I was asking her a question about it. And she said it was the best day of her whole life. And I was oh, like, oh. That's told, so cute. I, know, I told Aaron that last night on a date. And he was like, oh, that made him so happy because she was so funny at the dance. She didn't want to dance with Aaron a lot. She wanted to dance yeah. on the stage, <laughs> which is totally her. And so he said, I was kind of getting frustrated with her. She, like, she didn't want to hang out with me at the daddy-daughter dance. Yeah. And then I told him that, and he's like, okay. She had a lot of fun. (laughs) That's great. Yeah. Um, All that to say, say, I left if a little early, and so I know something really cool happened at the end. So tell me about it. Yeah, well, at the end, Jenny um, got to – she grabbed me. She was like, I want you to share your rock with people. And so what happened was we got to share kind of what – where we are at our place in life right now and and then how we want to move forward like what is our next phase step after leaving if and you know I sat there for a long time and I was like god what is it like is it is it that I continue with bottle of tears and I thought well of course I'm going to continue with that <laughs> but it was more that um I just felt this strong feeling that like I can that I believe maybe for the first time in a long time that God can heal me and my daughter. And I think you'll hear more of that later, but just, um, we've both been very, very, I've been very sick and she's dealt with so much trauma. And after so many years of dealing with that, you start to think, well, this is just how it's going to be the rest of my life. And, um, I remember they were singing break every chain and, I could picture the chain surrounding Eliana and me and, and God just saying, no, like, I want you whole. I want you um, healed and I want you whole and I want you to believe me for that. And so I got on stage and just said, you know, my place right now is at home with Eliana. Um, And I said, she's our daughter. We adopted from Guatemala seven years ago. And, she deals with an enormous amount of trauma and and I said it at the same time I'm battling a chronic disease and my faith step is to believe God for restoration and healing for both Eliana and me. And and I you know, I walked off the stage and I started just bawling. <laughs> um because it just it was so it was a moment that I I mean I'll never forget. I remember all these people looking at me just you know, and then just cheering. And I'm like, this is it. Like, this is the turning point for us. And, and what was so cool is right before I went on stage, um, we got to hear the testimony of April, um, who was in the tornado in Bologna that first day. And April and I got to be really good friends, um, this weekend. And before we went out on stage, her and her best friend, Jessica, which April just lost two little boys 10 months ago. And April is like, Lindsay, I want to pray healing over you. Like here is this mom who is in her, you know, the hardest, most dark days of her life saying, I want to pray over you. So for 20 minutes before I went out on stage, her and Jessica just prayed and prayed. And it was the most powerful Thing. And then I walk up on stage and I tell my faith step and whew, like it was, it was powerful. So, so what does that look like for you to not just say that on stage at if, but yeah. what does that look like day to day to actually believe that for you? Mm-hmm. If, I mean, practically speaking, it's me getting out of bed um, when I don't feel like it. Cause honestly, like since if, I mean, I'm in a lot of pain and I'm, my body's kind of in the shutdown mode, but I'm just choosing to go, okay, like we, I've got to take the next right step. And so for me, it's get up, get out of bed, put on clothes, like be very present with Eliana, um, which I always try to be, but it's so difficult, you know, mm-hmm. um, just feeling the way I do. And I just feel like, when I pray and when I spend time with the Lord, sorry, that's my Pomeranian barking. Um, when I pray, I just feel like there's just 
I feel like there's a trust, a trust in God that I've never felt before. Like a new way that you can actually believe him. Yes, yes. Which, you know, I don't even fully know what this is going to look like because it's been two days, you know, since I stood on that stage. But I do know that I've had people email me and write me and come up after the service and just say, I'm there too. Like, I am stuck at home, you know, with whatever it is, depression or um, a chronic disease or whatever. And they just thanked me, you know, for sharing. Yeah, and, a lot of times when you see someone else take that first step and yeah. step out and say, I believe this, it gives you like a little bit of boost of confidence. Like if she can do it, then I can yeah. do it. Totally, yeah. Um, when did you first find out that you had Lyme disease, right? Lyme disease, yeah. So it's probably been about 10 years that I've been really, really sick. And I remember my body just... And how old are you? I'm 35. Okay, so young. It started young. It was right after we got married. Um, and just started experiencing tons of pain and incredible fatigue and just random migrating pain that just wasn't normal. And I remember looking at Chris and going, I feel like I'm 90 years old. And I'm, you know, at that point, 30 mm -hmm. was when... Um, it had been five years of dealing with it where I'm like, okay, this is a problem. Right. And we went from doctor to doctor and, um, and no one could tell me what was going on. They kept misdiagnosing me. They told me I had chronic fatigue and I had fibromyalgia. And, um, some doctors were like, you're really depressed. Like they thought I was crazy. Yeah. I'm like, I promise you I really am sick. Um, and so I guess it's been about five years ago, but I went to this one, um, doctor and I just broke out bawling and just said look I I am not me and something is really wrong inside of me and um, I feel like I'm dying and no one's listening to me and so they did just tons and tons of blood work and um, called me and they said well I can't believe you were never tested for this before but you are like off the charts Lyme disease and so then I ended up started going to um different Lyme doctors, and I also have three um, three other, like, associated diseases with it. So it's a it's a chronic invisible illness, which is hard because you look normal, right. and your insides are just going crazy. crazy yeah. That makes sense. Is so. this something that they, had they caught this earlier, it wouldn't be as bad, or is it what it always would have been? Oh, totally. It would have been, if you can catch, like, if you have a tick bite and then you get treated right after, you're great. You're fine. Oh, really? But it's just that it's been in my system for so many years. Um, and so that's why it's so hard to treat. So we're, I'm on my sixth doctor and just keep plugging away. I mean, I've done so many different kinds of treatments. You would laugh at them. So. Is anything working? Um, not really yet. <laughs> But, I mean, there's moments, like, if I'm on high doses of antibiotics or, like, I get bicillin shots or, which is just tons of penicillin pumped into me. You know, you'll feel better for a while and then it wears off. the body will crash again, you know. Yeah. So we're, I'm praying for the actual relief, you know. Yeah. And so, so how long ago did you adopt your daughter? We adopted Eliana. Um, she's seven and a half, so it's been about six years ago that we adopted her. Okay. And Guatemala. my husband and I led a trip down to Guatemala, and I've worked in different orphanages there on and off for the last 15 years and just love the country and love the people. And I remember even before getting married, just begging God, please, Lord, let my husband want to adopt from Guatemala. Like, that was oh. just my heart. Um, and anyway, so we went down there and met a little girl and just fell in love and we knew the owners of the orphanage. And so we started our adoption process for Ziamora and, um, through a lot of events that fell through. And so we had a failed adoption and we had been down to visit her three times. So that was devastating. I didn't know that. Oh yeah. And so, I mean, she was we had eight by 10, 11 by 14 pictures of her everywhere in our house. Um, and so that was a, a major loss. Um, but 
But God used the Amara to bring us to Eliana because we were home study ready. Like we, our hearts were open to adoption at that point. And, um, and so we found out it was so crazy, but I went online and you know how you can go on the sites and look at the waiting children. Oh yes, I know. Oh yes, you do. <laughs> and then, so I saw this picture of this little girl and I remember thinking, I just love her. Like and I had never met her. How old was she? At that point, I mean, I saw, the picture of her was three months old. Okay. And she looked like a little boy. And it was like the cutest little thing you've ever seen. Yeah. And I remember Chris coming home, home from doing youth that night. And I said, Chris, please look at her picture. And he was like, Lindsay, what are you doing? Like, quit. <laughs> you yeah. know. And so I sent in, um, like, their email response to ask about her. And the people wrote me back the next day. And they're like, we don't have a clue how you saw her picture. She's been promised to a family for three months. Like, she's already in the adoption process. Okay. And they're like, we're so sorry. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And I got off the phone, and I just cried again. I'm like, God, so we lost Siamara. And for some reason, I feel attached to this little picture. She's and already she's attached. already promised. Uh -huh. And then the weekend went by, and they called me, and they said, Lindsay, this family has backed out on her adoption because Guatemala was shutting down their doors. Mm -hmm. And they were just too scared to continue with the process. And they were like, are y'all still interested? And so we prayed and we we're like, yes. So that next week we flew down there, signed power of attorney and the started. Next the week. Oh yeah. And we had to have $12,000 to put down. We had zero. We were youth pastor, you know, we were youth pastors. Okay. So I wrote on my blog, look, here's the scenario. There's this little girl. We need 12,000. And in five days, $21,000. Shut up. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I mean, I was like, okay, God. God's we like, get... I'm opening all the doors for you. Oh, yeah. And so that's the story of how we, and you know, how began our adoption. With it. Um, it was probably, you know, we brought her home at 16 months old. Okay. So, I mean, it took a while because they had shut down the... Mm -hmm adoptions um through the country so we were grandfathered in through the old clause yeah. but um i ended up moving to guatemala and living with her for four months before we brought her home so i became her official foster mom the week before she was a year old oh. i know so that was like the best ever so, i mean hard to be a first-time mom in a third world country but for sure <laughs> you know yes. but it's still like i look back and i just treasure those times. You got to yeah. do that. I know. Yeah. Um, so you've mentioned on here before, and I already, I already know your story, but you've mentioned on here that your daughter deals with a lot of trauma. Yeah. Um, I understand this world. I have kids via adoption and it's always funny to me. I always explain to people that adoption is beautiful. Mm -hmm. It is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that that's how God built our family and that's how he builds lots of families, but there's only a need for adoption because of tragedy. And so yes. adoption only exists because there's loss. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that some people don't think about that. They just think, oh, you're such an awesome person because you adopted yeah. kids. And, oh, these kids are so lucky. And, oh, I want to adopt and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But I think that a lot of people forget that these kids only join your family because of tragedy. You know, exactly. no one's showing up to your family and they have two loving parents that have taken care of them. You know, yeah. either their parents have died, their parents have abandoned them, their parents have decided they can't parent. So I know that this is reality, but a lot of people would hear you and say, oh, you've had your daughter since she was like, you know, mm -hmm. a year, 12 months old. Is that yeah. you know, whatever? And they're yeah. like, oh, how can you have any kind of, how can she have any problems? Like she was a baby, you know? So I yeah. think a lot of people are scared by older adoption because they and feel it's... that their kid is, could bring a lot of trauma yeah. and hurt into the home. And so they think, oh, if we have a little child, we're like mm. free from that. Oh no, you're not. So, yeah. <laughs> you and I both know that. <laughs> because it's, I mean, it is such a broken, broken place. Mm -hmm. And in that first year of life, their brains are developing and so any kind of trauma or abuse or whatever that you will never know because it's happening out of your control is forming their little brains and so I mean things that I, I mean I can't even tell you how many people are like she can't have trauma you got her at a year old just like what you said and I'm like 
Oh, I I promise. promise. You know, I have friends that adopted um, domestically. Mm -hmm. And so they have had their child since pretty soon after birth. And, you know, Karen Purvis season talks about that there is, and I just dropped a name, but if you're an adoption person, you you have to read her stuff. But she even talks about in utero, like there can Mm -hmm. be trauma. You know, you can have a biological child that you, that you have a mom and a dad and a great home. And and if you have Mm -hmm. trauma while you're pregnant, that your child can have, you know, trauma in their life just from being in utero. And I think that's crazy. And we forget about that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And for Eliana, I remember moving down to Guatemala and this little tiny baby would bounce in her crib for hours. Like Mm. she barely slept. And all of my friends around me, there were some adopted moms that were fostering with me and they were like, you have a party baby, you know? And I thought that at first. And then I'm like, after a few weeks of that, I thought, no, there is something really wrong, you know? And so that was kind of the beginning of, of Eliana's struggles. Mm-hmm. And we went five years of her just barely sleeping. Just, she was terrified of the night. Mm-hmm. And um, there were lots of things that came with that. Vanderbilt University or Vanderbilt Medical, they were like, she is a mystery. Like they tried every medication. Mm-hmm everything and we couldn't get Eliana to sleep and so which means mom and dad aren't sleeping let's be honest oh yes so yes <laughs> that yeah. is true yeah um you know and and our sweet I mean her heart is precious her she's so generous and giving and funny and and then there's this other side that it's just so dark and hard and um and a lot of adoptive parents are scared to talk about that um, just because it's hard to understand. But at the same time, I want people to know, like, there's hope. Don't, please don't give up. Like, please talk to someone. That's I. That's why I've shared a lot about Eliana's story because I want, first of all, like, to see the preciousness in your child, which is another caring purpose, like, to look in her eyes and see her preciousness Mm -hmm. and that all of this trauma, whether it's raging or, you know, just panic or not sleeping, like this is not her fault. Like this is because of what you said, Jamie, that they were in a scenario that no child should ever have to go through. That is not how God intended it to be for their little lives. And so the, I think when you have that perspective on it, you'll do whatever it takes to help there be healing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I say that hundreds of times to people and even more to myself, this is not yeah. their fault. This is not their Hopefully. fault. This is not their fault. Um, just the other day I was laying in bed with Amos and we were praying and I said, what do you, what do we want to talk? What do we want to ask God to help you with? Yeah. And he just very boldly said, I want him to help me not be mad. Oh, um, that's the sweetest and he struggles with, anger when mm-hmm. things don't go how they're supposed to go mm-hmm. and people will be like oh well my kid does too and i get that everyone struggles when things don't go the way they don't get but it's a different, different level. level but it's a different level and he's not he's not raging anger it mainly just drives me crazy because it's just he just kind of will shut down but for for someone who doesn't have that had never had control for the first four and a half years of their life when something's mm-hmm. not going as planned it can send him into a tailspin but yeah. just to hear him say i want god to help me with that, that you know, starting to acknowledge that. But my question for you is, and yeah. I've had other people ask me this just recently, so I want to get your thoughts on this. How do you how do you handle um, sharing about your child and their struggles and their story, and still guarding their story? How do you how do you where's that line for you, and how do you do that? Because for me, I want people to know that adoption is not just roses. Exactly. That yeah. it is hard, you know, yeah. and you have to be called to it. And it is just like, yeah, it's just hard, you know, because you are bringing yeah. someone into your family that is bringing in, I don't want to say baggage cause that's weird, but just trauma and hurt. And mm-hmm. so, like you said, you look at them and you see the beauty in them, but you also see the hurt, which then sometimes translates into your family as hard. Okay. So I want people to know that. Um, so how do you, how do you find that line of sharing about y'all stories and your struggles and your yeah. joys and your, you know, accomplishments and still guarding her life? Well, I think what you said is, is the, is the main thing is sharing both. I mean, I make a huge point to share the hilarious things Eliana says. I mean, 
she says things that I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. That's the cutest thing I've ever heard. So I'll write about that. And um, just even the other day, she had been saving her money because she really wanted to buy a lobster to eat. Like, she really was obsessed with lobster. Like, she wanted you to cook it at home or she wants to go to a restaurant? She wants to go to Red Lobster, her favorite restaurant. She's Red Lobster. This is correct. Yeah. I think that you should be responsible for bringing a lobster into your house to cook for her. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be funny. Yeah. Um, so she had this money, and then her friend came over and saw that she had a little Furby, which is that annoying little stuffed animal thing that talks. That every parent wants to throw out the window, yes. Oh, 100%. Well, this little girl didn't have one, and she said, Mom, I want to give her all my money so she can get a Furby. And that's Eliana's true heart. So, like, I share mm -hmm. that part of Eliana, too, because I say that is Eliana's true spirit and heart, and... But then at the same time, um, I think I shared more when she was smaller, um, before she started school and I got to share more of like our daily struggles and, you know, with her not sleeping, people knew that Eliana struggled big time with rages, um, which is something I didn't even really know existed before we brought her home. So that was such a learning process of going, oh wow, like this is bigger than, mm -hmm the three of us like we've got to get major help yeah. um and then at the same time like I asked for prayer I mean we can't do this alone like I don't want this to be an isolated thing we talk really honestly with Eliana about it and and she understands like just like you said that that there is so much anger inside of her little mind and and just anger and rage and and she she hates it. Mm -hmm. She doesn't like it. Yeah, you know, yeah. she'll say, "Mama, why do I feel like this? Mm -hmm. Like, why am I so mad?" She'll mm -hmm. just say, "I'm so mad." And so I think it's just us helping her work through those thoughts. I mean, praise God, we have the most incredible counselor that was trained under Karen Purvis. So yeah. um, we have an amazing lady that can walk with us through this journey, but. I mean, overall, I felt God telling me, like, you need to be honest about this with people um, because no one else is being honest. And I bet you have people coming out of the woodwork saying, oh, thank you. Thank you. I, I can't tell you the emails I've gotten and people that have called me and texted me. And, yeah, because they're living in fear. Or, like, if I share this, this family member won't love my child. Or Yes, that is a big one, yes. You know, and praise God, I have an incredible support system of family that love Eliana for Eliana. And, you know, and it's hard because there are people that once you share this, will be, um, they will disappear from your life. We lost, you know, a lot of, a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, the people that God really once in your life will be there for you. Yeah. So, And I think it's whenever you go through anything in life. Like, mm -hmm. for example, if one of my girlfriends came over and told me that she had just been diagnosed with cancer, yeah. I would support her and walk with her, but I have never had cancer. So mm -hmm. it would be hard for me to fully understand what she's walking through. Um, yeah. So you can put say that for anything in life. And so for me, walking through adoption, finding people that have also been there, has yes. been a lifesaver. And we brought our kids, Amos and Story, home. Our community here, they supported us 100% awesome. as much as they could. But I didn't know anyone else that was walking through this. Okay. And so literally, online relationships were a lifesaver. Oh, me too. Yes. Me too. <laughs> and I, I'm a big fan for like in-person relationships, walking through this stuff like this. But they didn't exist for me then. Yeah. Now, I had amazing friends who loved me so well. But they'd never had a kid in their home that was doing some of the things that Amos was doing at the time. Yeah. So I think you, what you're doing is really, really great for a lot of parents to be able to see like, Oh, I'm not alone here. And we, we, have, a, we have a Facebook group that I mean, we call ourselves the trauma mamas. Like, <laughs> and so we get to share like yes. what's going on in that day. And, and no this, one will think less of you. Exactly. Or your kid. I think that's the key for me. The key mm -hmm. for me is I am not, I'm 36. And although I do care too much about what people think about me, I care, I care way more what they think about my child. Yeah. And so for me, sharing stuff with some people is a little bit harder because I don't want them to think less of my child. I know. Because I don't think less of my child. Well, and that's why I go I go above and beyond to tell all the amazing things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, because I'm like, because those are true. Like, yeah. that's true. She yeah. is all of those things. Yeah. And I'm super passionate about that. Like, 
I, I think God is creating, like, she is, Eliana is going to be a powerhouse. Like, I can't wait to watch and see what she's going to do with her story. Change the world. So. Yeah. I think that's a good reminder, too, to us moms. And it doesn't have to be a child that is hard through adoption. Plenty yeah. of people have hard children that came straight out of their hoo-ha. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was about to say the word, and then I thought, <laughs> this is a family-friendly show. I don't think yeah. I should say that. Um, anyhow, so I think this is across the board for parents if you have a child that is difficult. I think what you're saying is a really good reminder. For me, I'm thinking right now is, do I focus only on the hard stuff? Or do... Mm-hmm. Maybe I need to, like, if I'm having a rough day with one of my kids, any four of them, doesn't matter. Yeah. Maybe I should stop and sit down and write down all the amazing things about them. Exactly. So, you know, because yeah. it would kind of change me in that moment from just being so mad at whatever they're doing that's just frustrating me so bad mm-hmm. to then flip it and be like, okay, but you're amazing in these ways. Totally. So you and just, they need to hear that. Me. I think I'm going to do that. Yay. Next time I'm mad, That's I'll be like, fun. give me a minute. I'm going to go write down why I like you. I'll be back to deal with this. <laughs> exactly. That's perfect. Yes. That's awesome. We can all do that. Right? When you're mad at someone, you write down why you like them, and then that'll help you. That's oh. so good. Um, okay, throughout your adoption, and you were sharing with me when I saw you at the Influence about Bottle of Tears. Mm-hmm. And, and, so, that, and that was formed no. through me being in bed last year at IF. Oh, that came from actually that yes. moment. Yeah. So I was in bed that weekend just crying. And I remember someone was talking about, like, are you going to get back in the race? Like, are you going to get back in the race? They were saying? A what? Speaker, a speaker was saying? Yeah, one of the speakers said, are you going to just sit there on the sidelines? Or are you going to get back in the race? And, like, that just really stuck with me. I was like, oh, man. Like, I am on the sidelines right now. And I, at that point in my life, just had, I feel like I was struggling so much to be what I needed to be for Eliana and had just given up on myself. And and that God was wanting to use me for something, too. Um, which being Eliana's mama was a huge thing, sure, obviously. I, I hear you, yeah. But, um, you know, I remember, so I laid in bed and I was like, okay, God, like, if, if this is real and if I'm going to get back in this race, what can I do? Because I'm basically Jamie, a shut in in our house. Like, mm-hmm. um, Eliana has so many fears about leaving the house. Um, so we are here pretty much all the time. Oh, like, so, so not even just from your illness. Oh no, no, just Eliana and my illness. So like we can't, I don't have the luxury of going to target with her or to, the grocery store, like we can't go anywhere. Okay. So we are here at the house. So I mean, I would call myself like a shut in. Uh-huh. Um, I pick her up from school and that's basically it. Um, and just recently God's allowing us to go to church again for the first time in forever because Eliana couldn't do church. So, uh-huh. um, so all of that to say being stuck in the house, I said, okay, God, what can I do? here in my house. Like I cannot leave. I have a daughter that needs me 24 seven. Um, and I am sick, so I can't go work anywhere else, you know? Um, and I remember laying in bed and thinking, what is the, for me being sick, one of the coolest things is mail, which is so random. It's not but, random because everybody yeah. loves mail. And then just imagine if you can't leave yeah. the house. It's literally like gold to me. Like if someone remembers me, and remembers me in my pain, Jamie, it's the most powerful thing. Like I have, there's a friend that literally she bought me a pot and she said, put it on your porch and text me when you need this amazing chicken noodle soup. And so she will leave it on my porch and like, that's her gift. And she does it just every few weeks. And Eliana calls it the magic soup. And so for someone to remember you in the midst of your pain is huge. And so, so mail for me was so important. And I remember, um, I love vintage anything and I love vintage bottles and, and God in that moment, laying in bed, watching all these people on the stage. Um, he said, I want you to comfort the broken. Like, I want you to comfort those who are stuck at home, who feel like their life is over, who, um, have lost a loved one or, were diagnosed with something or have a wayward child or, you know, or have had a hard week. I mean, 
like anyone. Yeah. And so I, I remember calling Chris into the bedroom and I said, I think I'm going to start a ministry out of our house called Bottle of Tears. Just and he randomly, looked at me. Just, just randomly. Yeah, total random. This was, so this was 11 months ago. And I said, I said, Chris, I think I'm doing this and I'm going to put Psalm 56, eight rolled up inside these bottles, you know, which is you keep track of all my sorrows. You've collected all my tears, all your tears in my bottle, in your bottle. And you've recorded each one in your book. And that verse has always been so powerful to me because God sees every tear. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, we're, I'm going to just send these from my house. Like I'm going to, mail these vintage bottles to people with the scripture verse just to show like you're not alone. God sees you yeah. and, and whoever's sending it to him, they see you too. Um, so that night I went on Etsy and I paid $5. Wait, 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 you did not take any time. Did you? No. Like, you were like I'm doing this and I'm doing it tonight. <laughs> I did. Oh it God. all happened in one night. Like you're going to laugh your oh head my off. Gosh. Like, I felt like when God told me, he was like, you're doing this. And I was like, okay. okay. So I went on Etsy. I bought my logo for $5. I bought a stock image. I went on. I don't know how to build a website. I did it. <laughs> like, oh, literally my word. in a day. And I okay, went time on. Time out real quick. Time out real quick. Yes. What was Chris saying? Was he like, oh, you're awesome. Or like, you're kind of crazy. No, he was. He is my. He's the biggest cheerleader in the whole world, and he was just so proud of me. Oh, I love like, it. You know, he would have taken two months to figure out if the logo was perfect. Exactly, but you're like, and I'm just doing it. it. Yeah. And he was like, oh, my gosh, are you, you're going really fast. So I was like, <laughs> yep. And, um, yeah, so I made an Instagram account, and I wrote, I'm going to start mailing out bottles in, I think I said, like, two weeks. So I didn't even have any bottles at that point. Okay. And so I just said, we're doing this. And so that's kind of how it started, Jamie. Like, and then what? You went and bought bottles? Yeah, I um, I went to, which I feel awful, you know, uh -huh. so that was hard. Yeah. I started going to antique stores and then I ended up, this is only God, but like through eBay, I found some different bottle collectors. Like they're, these men dig like in old sites for these vintage bottles. Okay. It's their like their passion, their hobby. Like so I've become friends with like all these old old men who are like precious and that's what they love to do. And so now they'll you know, they'll send me huge boxes full of vintage wow. bottles and yeah. so I ended up making our spare bedroom. Our house is 1200 square feet. We have a dog, cat, hamster and fish. So like we have all of that. We have one spare bedroom, and we ended up making that my bottle room. Okay. And so we call it the bottle room, and it's full of vintage bottles and all of the stuff that I use to to work. And it's kind of just been a slow process. I mean, there are things that I want for the site that I just can't yet because of my of being sick. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I felt like God was saying, this doesn't have to be beautiful, Lindsay. Like, you just need to obey. Like, you just need to take that next step. And don't worry about if the, your Instagram looks perfect or your pictures look pretty. Or what, don't even worry what people think about you or how many followers you're going to get. You know, like, I remember getting 100 followers, and I was like, yes, like, uh -huh. 100 people know about Bottle yeah. of Tears. Yeah. And... The only reason I would ever want followers is because I just want more people to receive hope in the mail. Yeah. That's it. Like, that's what I want. I think that's such great advice for anything God's asking you to do. How you just said, yeah. like, it doesn't have to be perfect or beautiful yet. Just take that step yeah. and do it. Just do it. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, so it's been a process this year. There have been some incredible stories out of it. I mean, already just people at their lowest point. And because I thought, there's nothing magical about a vintage bottle with a scripture verse. Right. Anyone could do that. Yeah. Like, but it's, it's such a powerful verse and it's a visual reminder mm -hmm. to someone mm -hmm. it, you know, I have my bottles next to my bed and I just look at them when I feel like I can't do this Lord. Yeah. And he's like, yes, I'm here. Yeah. I see you uh -huh. like there's purpose in your pain. 
you can do this. You yeah, know, I actually have the one that you gave me at the influence conference. It's on my desk. And every time I see it, I think of you. I yeah. mean, cause you gave it to me. Yeah. So it was kind of the opposite way of how it works, but yeah. it makes me think of you and this incredible yes. ministry that you're doing. So tell the people that are listening just so they can get a grasp around what, what this means. If you are someone who's not hurting, not just physically, mostly spiritually, but you have people that are around you that are, is that who your customer is? That really is my customer. Okay. I mean, I have a few people that will buy them for themselves okay. that are, that are really lonely uh -huh. and they need that reminder. And I'm like, yes, yeah. buy a bottle for yourself. Yeah. But mainly it's people that are trying to comfort, encourage people around them. Um, so they go like to I, your site. I, I, what? They go to your site, yeah. buy a bottle, and uh -huh. then it's shipped to their friend. Yes, exactly. And I have all different colors and different styles of vintage bottles. And so they pick out the one. And so when I'm doing the order, which I wrap each one in kind of this like vintage newsprint it's bag. Really, it's really, really cute. Yes. Well, thanks. And, and I love getting to pray over each story. And so, and I pray that this bottle like lands on their porch at the exact day they need it. And so one of the one of the coolest stories I heard was um, one of the girls got an amber bottle. She sent it to her friend that lost her sister named Amber, and that girl called me or messaged me and said, "You won't believe this, but I had sent her a Frank's Safe Liver and Kidney Cure bottle, which was like from, I mean, so long ago. Okay, and just randomly just picked that bottle out. Totally okay. yes, and it you know it's that's what it says on the front of it. And it's an amber colored bottle. And, and she said, Lindsay, when my sister died in the car wreck, you know, she donated her organs and the two organs that they used were liver and kidney. And that was it. And that was on her bottle. And she said, like it meant everything to her. And I thought, Lord, you care about even the little details of what's on the bottle. Like that to me, I was like, okay, like, because you had no way of knowing no, that. You know, no you just idea. went to your bottle room and picked out a bottle. Oh, yeah. And then I had another lady that sent one to her friend. And um, I had an aqua bottle that had lung tonic um, engraved on it mm -hmm. and sent it to her. And it her dad had just died of lung cancer. Mm -hmm. And so just to hear these stories and to go, okay, like, God, you are so in this. And... I want to be obedient and faithful. I mean, Jamie, there's days I go, whew, like I have all the orders and I feel awful. And, I, and I've and i looked at Chris and gone, I can't do this anymore. And he's like, yes, no, you can't, but God can through you. And so he'll sit up there with me in the ballroom and just help me. Mm -hmm. And we do it together as a team. And um, I'm looking and so, at your website yeah. right now. And these <laughs> bottles are beautiful. Thanks. I need to redo tons of pictures, but thank you. I mean, That's they're sweet. just beautiful. Yeah. And I can see how this would be such an amazing gift to get in the mail. Yeah. And so they, they'll go online and then they will write, um, they'll get to write like a message of hope and comfort to their friend. And I include that with the bottles and, um, yeah, so it's just been a joy and, I can't wait to see what God's going to do, you know, with it just for more people. I just want more people to, to, to feel the hope from it. Oh. Um, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm not a business person at all. But you're but, rocking it. You're rocking it so far. Well, it, <laughs> I mean, it's hilarious. It's like so. the biz. It's like, it totally is a business. So don't ever, but people, people call it a, uh, one of my friends said, it's like a business tree. It's a business and a ministry. Yeah. I was going to say, don't let yourself yeah. not think it is a business because it is, but it is also ministry and full of hope, which I think. And that's think where my heart is. My yes. heart is for these people. Yeah. And those two can be, those two can go together with no problem. So don't ever think that. But yeah, what an amazing, amazing ministry that you have going here. Um, yes. You want to, you want to give away some bottles? Oh, a hundred percent. Yes. Okay. Like, so. How many do you want to give away? I love it. You're in charge of that. However many you want to give away. Um, let's give away three different mm -hmm. bottles. Mm -hmm. So like to three different people yeah. uh -huh. and they can either like whoever the winners are, if they are having a rough day, I want you to keep this bottle for yourself. But if you're not, and if you have someone on your heart, like 
I, I call it the dif a different kind of giveaway mm -hmm. because they can give it away to their yeah. friend yeah. who's struggling. I love so. that. Okay, so we're going to give away three, and if you go to jamieivy.com, you'll find out how you can do that. It's super and easy. And I'll add both of my prints in there with them, too. Oh, so. even better. Perfect. Yeah. Those prints are beautiful. Yeah. Who designed those? Um, one of the guy, the guy that designed my Psalm 56, eight print is Caleb Ferris and he's an amazing artist. Okay. And then my Psalm 91, four, the, with his feathers, he will cover you is just a beautiful little feather print that I just got. And it was a sweet girl on Etsy. So Aww, love it. Yeah. So I know. Fun. Um, so we'll, I'll put all the information up about that as well. So I love this so much. Okay. Lindsay, I always ask my guests what they're reading. Are you reading a book right now? <laughs> Um, I actually have, which is hilarious because I Are you a reader? Well, I used to be. It's really hard because my head hurts a lot. And who wants and to so read when their head hurts? Yep. It's really hard to read. Mm -hmm. But I have um, actually in the last month have started reading The Every Better, Bitter Thing is Sweet by Sarah Haggerty. Is that right? I've seen this book floating around. I think you're right. And you like it has the honeycomb on the front? Yeah, it does. And yeah. so it's been, I mean, I'm probably in the like fourth chapter and it's uh -huh. great. Like, it, you know, and in there she talks about how the beach is her, like her, like the love and her safe place. And I was like, Chris, this is me. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, that's probably it. I read a lot of just Jesus Calling, Jesus Today. Mm -hmm. The author of Jesus Calling, Sarah Young, has Lyme disease as well. I didn't and know so, that. Yeah, she does. So for me, that has been just a huge, like, okay, like, Lord, the Lord speaks to me because she created Jesus Today in the midst of, like, her lowest points in Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. And so, and she's battling it out, too. So we have the Jesus Sarah calling. Young. We have the Jesus Calling for kids. Oh, I love it. Yeah. yeah. We do that yeah. sometimes at dinner. So pray for Sarah when you think of it. I, I will think of that book when I read it even different, you know? Yeah. Oh, so, so wonderful. Those, those are the things we're reading. I love it. It's, I know. I, I'm a reader. You, you challenge me to read more. So I need to get some books on tape. See, that's I have done that too, traveling or stuff. Um, yeah, that's a great way to listen to tape. To, even if you could listen in your house, like you download them on your phone. Yeah, I think Audible probably does stuff like that. Um, you could listen to them while you fill bottles. Yes, no, that's good because I'm really a professional at Netflix. <laughs> okay, what are you watching? Tell me. Oh gosh. Okay, right now. Well, I I rewatch things like I'm rewatching Friday Night Lights, which is just so fun. Okay. I watched it for the first time. I think last spring. You and did, just, didn't you love it? I just binged on it. Just couldn't stop. And I had tried to watch that show three more times previously and would get to like episode three and never got into it. And then I just yeah. pushed through and I, I felt like I knew these people. Oh, I, I feel, feel like they're, they're my family. family. Yes. <laughs> exactly. You know, I just like, oh, it's crazy. So yeah. Okay. But I'm else? all over the place. I love any British show. Okay. Like, maybe I was supposed to be from Britain. I don't know. Those are hard for me. So I admire you for liking them. I can, I have a hard oh, time. Okay, so what else are you watching there? Um, let me think. Uh, I mean, I, what have I not watched? Just everything. <laughs> you know what I was thinking about? You can tell me if you've watched this, which yeah. you might have already. I'm thinking about I can't watch anything scary. Okay, then you haven't watched The Fall. <laughs> no, I have not. <laughs> but I've been watching. Um, I'm thinking about watching Gilmore Girls. I did watch that. See, I've it's never seen it. It was just really, like, light and fluffy, and, you know, it was good. I hear that by the end of it, you, like, love them, too. Oh, yeah. Well, and when I have Netflix on while I'm working or whatever, mm -hmm. I get about one-tenth of the show. I I understand that, yes. But it's just nice to have it on in the background. Yeah, yeah. But just I think from now on, I'm going to do some books on tape. See, that'd be even better. But you might need to get more than one-tenth of what you're listening to if you're listening to a book. True. Or you won't know what's happening. <laughs> I know. I'll also listen to sermons. I love yeah. doing that. Yeah. So. yeah. I, I listen to sermons and podcasts and all kinds of stuff. That's so um, fun. Lindsay, it's been so fun chatting with you. Oh my gosh, thank you. I loved it. This hour flew by. I know. It really did. I looked up while ago and I was like, oh my gosh, it's been 45 minutes? How? <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah. I know well, that you. this, um, just your story is going to resonate with everyone there's no one that's listening that has not been through um some pain and some hurt and so they may not have a child that has trauma yeah. like ours and they may not have a chronic disease but they've definitely had seasons where they've been um 
not feeling the best. And so yeah. you, your words are going to encourage them. They've encouraged me already. And I cannot wait for three people to get these bottles because yeah, me too. I, I can't wait to hear like the story, like someone's going to be listening and they're going to think yes. about that person, you know, and then it's going to say like, Oh, I could do this for them. And you just encouraged me today too, just thinking like to remember those around me, because honestly, yes. the sad thing is, is that our lives just move so quickly yeah. that I may have a friend that's hurting and I'll remember her the day she tells me in the next two days. Mm -hmm. And then I'm ashamed to say sometimes I forget about the yeah. hurt that she shared with me, you know, because we move so quickly. And just it's, it's as little as like sending a text message or, yeah, yeah just remembering them. It's huge. Okay, so this, I want you to tell me this about remembering people. Encourage us yeah. all here for just a second. Mm -hmm. What are some of the major things that when you were feeling so down and like a shut-in, what are some like easy, tangible things that people did for you that made a huge difference? For me, it was, uh, like I said, meals or an email I mean just even an email mm -hmm. um ran, like for us we we've had to pay all of our expenses out of pocket mm -hmm. um for the line and for Eliana so we would get just a random check in the mail or whatever and like you just have no idea how yeah. huge that is yeah. you know yeah. um I'm trying to think just text messages mm -hmm. just saying like I love you. I'm sorry I'm not there, but I'm thinking about you. Yeah, That's huge. Anything. Yeah, anything. It's helped me a lot. We had a, a friend who, um, my husband was close, Aaron was closer with the guy who died. And mm -hmm. so um, his wife now lives back here in Austin. And I have another friend that is really close to them. And I was talking to them, to her one time, just saying like, I just don't know what to say. Like, I don't know yeah. what to do. And she's like, just saying that like you you remember yeah. him even in that situation where she lost her husband she's like even just talking about him is good for her and I was like oh really? really like she won't care like that won't make her sad she's like no she wants to know yeah. that people still remember her yeah. husband that passed away you know and so you can put that in any scenario and be like because sometimes I'm like I don't know if I should talk to them about their cancer and again yeah. there's like some like you got to find a balance here. Like not yeah. just be like, Hey, how's your cancer going? You know, uh, but just to let someone know, like, Hey, I want to know everything about you. And I, and I acknowledge that you're hurting and I want you to know that I love you. So. Yeah. It's yeah. And it, it's easier than you think, you know, and it's, it doesn't take you coming and sitting with them for four hours. Like, mm -hmm. honestly, that's hard. Like I can't really have a lot yeah. of visitors. Mm -hmm. And so it's more just the little things yeah. that mean a lot. Yeah. So, okay. I know people are just listening, encouraged and thinking of someone right now that as soon yeah. as they're done listening, they're going to send a text to, which is what I'm yeah. going to do as soon as we get off this call. So Good. thanks for your encouragement. I know it's going to help out lots of people. So well, thank, thank you. you. So it's such an honor to get to do this. You're so fun. I'm glad I got to hug your neck this past weekend. And I know. you too. I'll see you. Okay. I'll see, okay. you, I'll see you again soon. I'm sure. Right. Our, our paths will cross forever Please. now. We have to. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thanks, okay, thanks for being on happy hour. Guys, thanks so much for listening. Wasn't Lindsay awesome? I want you to go to my website. It's jamieivy.com. And there you're going to find a couple things. You're going to be able to leave a comment and be in for the drawing so you can win one of those ball of tears that we talked about. Also, I want you to just go find the links to her website because you're going to love it. She literally is bringing hope to people that feel as though they don't have any. And so I love sharing her story with you. Thank you so much. I want to let you know a few things. Number one. If you haven't subscribed in iTunes, go ahead and do that. It's super easy. You'll always get these in your inbox. Number two, next week I have my friend Asher Colley on. And we've never met in person, but in about 10 days I'm heading to Uganda and I'll be meeting her real life in person. And I cannot wait to tell you about that. Number three, I have a guest that I keep wanting to bring on, but they're always so busy that we can't ever schedule an invitation to get them on. And that is actually my husband. Hey, Aaron. Hi. He's here with me while I'm recording this little ending. Do you want to be on my show? I don't know. I'll have to check the calendar. Check your calendar. It's mostly women that listen. Do you think they'll I know. love it? That's what's so intimidating. Would we have anything to talk about that they would want to hear? I don't know. I don't know either. But I think you had th like you had more than three. You had two number threes just now. Two number th Oh, I said I had three things. Said I had three four things. things. You said one this, and then two this, and then three this, and then three this, and then three this. I do that a lot. But anyhow, do you want to be on my show? I don't know, but 
I have House of Cards pulled up right now <laughs> on uh, Apple TV, and it's. I think that you should watch it with me. Okay, so I'm going to finish this podcast. Guys, thanks for listening to Lindsay and I. My favorite thing about doing the happy hour is to bring you people around the world that you can connect with. I want you to know about these fabulous women around the world, and I also want you to know that other people are dealing with the same thing that you're dealing with. So thank you for listening. Thank you for following Lindsay and seeing what she's doing. The other thing I love about you is while you're doing this podcast, you're using your hands. I the use my time, both of them. I use my hands a lot. So if you could <laughs> see me, you would see my hands moving. This is a really behind the scenes type of deal right here. Thanks, Aaron, for calling me out. Mm-hmm. Let's watch House of Cards. We should do a video podcast, like a vlog. That's what they call it. Anyhow, guys, thanks so much for listening. Any information that we talked about today, you can find it at jamieivy.com. All right, I'll see you next week, and we'll have Asher on, and then hopefully I'll get Aaron Ivy on the podcast. But until then, we're going to go watch House of Cards. Have a great day. Love the people you're with, and enjoy the happy hour. I'll see you guys next week.